Hi, I'm Shay. And I'm Ken. And we're from the Groundworker Training Program. Today we are going to be talking about how to properly sharpen a chainsaw. By no means will we be going over every detail with these chainsaws when it comes to the maintenance or sharpening of these. For further detail, please consult the owner's manual, or better yet, ask your instructor for further detail. If you do see any issue with these saws or any of the equipment in the program, please use these lockout tags so that nobody comes along, picks up the equipment and endangers themselves. On the back here, you will list what you feel the issue is with this equipment and inform your instructor immediately. Always remember that when you're using a battery chainsaw like this one, you want to remove the battery before doing any kind of maintenance. When the battery is in the saw, the saw is ready to go and that chain is live, so always remove the battery before you touch the chain. This is the chain of the chainsaw. It has multiple parts, including the drive links. These are the pieces that keep that chain running around the bar in the groove in the bar. These are the tie straps, which connect the two pieces. And these are the rivets, which hold those two together. The pitch of the chainsaw is the distance between three rivets divided by two. The pitch is very important when you are sharpening a chainsaw so that you can find the correct file. This is the tooth of the chainsaw. This is a blown up version of the cutter tooth. This is the depth gauge. It determines how much wood is being severed. This is the cutting corner, which pierces the wood. This is the top plate, which lifts a piece of wood off. And this is the side plate, which severs that piece of wood. These holes are for the rivets, so they connect the cutter tooth to the rest of the chain. This is the heel, which is at the back of the cutter tooth, and this is the toe, which determines the front of the cutter tooth. Here, we have the witness mark, which determines when you need to retire that chain. There's also one on the depth gauge. Imagine the cutter tooth as a planer lifting wood off. When you are filing, you will be doing this movement right here so that you are removing a small piece of filing from the side plate, the top plate, and the cutting corner with this movement. You want the file to be about 20% above the top plate. And those are the parts of the chainsaw cutter. It's important to understand the reactive forces of a chainsaw. As this cutter is traveling around the bar, the depth gauge is determined the amount of material to be removed. As we get to the nose of the bar, this depth gauge ducks down and now is really exposing this cutter to more material than it can remove. And this is when we get rotational kickback. It simply cannot sever that amount of wood and the energy is not destroyed. It needs to go somewhere and it goes into a force called rotational kickback. We have three additional reactive forces on the saw. So when we're cutting with the top of the bar, we receive a force that's called push. And if you can write upside down, neater than that, I'll be super impressed. But we got our push there. Now on the bottom, when we're cutting with the bottom of the bar, the chainsaw will tend to get pulled in. When we're cutting with the top of the bar, we get that push force. So at the bottom, we'll write pull. Luckily, these are four letter words, easy to spell. Now here we talked about that rotational kickback. Kickback is too big of a word for me, so I'm just going to go ahead and call this 
the no zone because we do not want to be cutting with that section by itself. But there is times we need to pierce or plunge into the wood and with that we're going to use this bottom quadrant of the saw that we'll call the go corner. So as that cutter goes around, depth gauge is determining the amount of material we're going to remove. We go around the nose, it's exposing too much wood. It cannot sever it. We get that rotational kick back. But as we get into that go section, now that depth gauge is working again. We're back in a good safe position. So we call it push, pull, no, and go. The first thing you need to determine when you are going to sharpen the chainsaw is the pitch, which will determine what size file you're using. The pitch, once again, is determined by the distance between three rivets divided by two. The pitch can also be found on the side of the bar, right here, beside the picture of the three rivets. The pitch of this particular chainsaw is 0.325. The pitch can also be found on the box of the chainsaw chain. So here, again, with that picture of the three rivets, is the pitch. From there, we can go down here where it is a picture of the file and the file size that corresponds to that pitch. You can also find the pitch on your two-in-one file. So here, on this 2-in-1 file, we have a 0.325 pitch. To find your file size, you can actually open up that 2-in-1 file, take out a file, and here we have the file size on the side, 3 16 for this particular file. The other place that you can find your proper file size and pitch is in the manual where there will always be a chart. And that is how you find the pitch and the file size. Now that you've determined the pitch, you can begin filing the chainsaw. You'd want to start with the worst tooth, the one that's hit the nail or is the shortest and mark off that tooth. That's where you're going to begin. Again, the pitch of this chainsaw is 0.325, and so we find the corresponding file and file guide. Here's our file guide. It tells us the angles that we're sharpening at. So for a 0.325 pitch chainsaw, our file size is 3 16 the angle that we're sharpening at is 30 degrees, which is indicated on the file guide here. So starting with that tooth we've marked, with our chain break on, we match up that angle to the side of the chainsaw at a 90 degree angle from the bar. And keeping that angle, Swipe however many times you need to get that tooth looking good again. Count how many swipes you're taking on each tooth so that you can continue doing that on each tooth that you are sharpening. When you're sharpening a chainsaw, you want to sharpen all of the teeth on the chainsaw. The other kind of file guide that you can use is this two-in-one file guide. So once again, we find the file guide that says 0.325 on it, which is our pitch. And then we follow the pictures and the signals on the file guide to put it in the correct direction to file. This is the arrow that shows you the direction you're filing in. And here is a picture of the chainsaw so that you can match it up to how the chainsaw itself looks. We set a round file within that tooth and swipe again at 30 degrees. To do the other side of the chain, we simply 
flip our file guide over, match up again the picture to the actual chainsaw and the arrow here. And now we can file the other side. Take off the same amount of material from each tooth so that your chainsaw will cut properly and that is how you file a chainsaw. If we're using a more traditional style file guide, we want to address the depth gauge now. So the round file has come in, it's sharpened up that top plate side plate and cutting corner, but now our depth gauge is up a little bit higher. And this is important that we address the depth gauge. When you look at the cutter profile, you'll notice that the cutter profile is on a taper. It tapers down and it tapers in. So the reason for this is really friction. The only part we want in contact with the tree is the part that's working. Everything else ducks in behind. So the depth gauge needs to be lower because that's determining the amount of material that we remove. So now as we lower this top plate profile back, we're gonna to have to come in and address the depth gauge. So what we're gonna do for that, we have our trusty old depth gauge guide here, and we're gonna rest that on the cutter. So there's a little bit of a lip or a ledge here that you'll see, this lip or this ledge is where the cutting corner will come in contact with and then the depth gauge will poke up through this groove in the file. So, resting that on the cutter, we grab our flat file out. Anything that pokes up in this gap here, we're gonna file out. Because this cutter is fairly new, we don't have much that's poking up. But as that cutter gets further back, we're gonna notice that this depth gauge is gonna take more and more material down. When that happens, we're gonna reach a point where we wanna come in and kind of retaper that depth gauge so we have the good aerodynamics that we had right out of the box. And this is an awesome way to sharpen a chainsaw. <laughs>